Hello, I'm Mary Holstage, Distinguished Engineer at MarkLogic, and I'm here today to talk to you about the architecture of the MarkLogic server and how it fits in your world. MarkLogic is an enterprise NoSQL multimodal database management system. Let's unpack that a little bit. Database, because you want to store your data. Management system, because it's not just enough to dump your data somewhere, you want to actually govern it. Multimodal, because we believe you should be able to store all your data, no matter what its shape or format, NoSQL, so you can expect the flexibility and scalability of a NoSQL database. But enterprise, because we provide those enterprise features you demand, such as security and acid transactions and real-time full-text search. So MarkLogic is a clustered database. There's multiple nodes running. Let's look at what's happening inside just one of them on one node. Here it is. There's multiple layers. We're going to take these from the bottom up. At the bottom is the data layer, and at the base of that is storage system. We're multimodal, so there's actually several different kinds of storage. There's the compressed text storage, where we store the text format documents such as XML or JSON. And we understand the structure of those documents as well at this level. There's binary storage for your binary assets such as images or uh, videos. And then semantic storage for semantic triples, semantic relationships. On top of that, we have an extensive set of indexes. There's the main full text index, of course, although it provides, we call it the universal index because it provides much more than just words. Um, but then there's specialized indexes for more specialized forms of data, geospatial, scalar, semantic, relational, and so on. There's also the security index at this level. All data, all data access in MarkLogic is mediated through the security index which means you don't have to rely on your developers to get your security policy right everywhere in your application or to change it correctly when you change because it's right here at the most fundamental level of data access in MarkLogic. Built on top of this are data caches to mediate efficient access to the data storage and data on disk, and the journal. When you save a data in MarkLogic, we write the compressed data and the indexes in batches. So first what we do is write a journal entry and make sure it's committed to disk so that if lightning strikes, your server dies, before we commit the batch data efficiently, we still have that committed journal record. And we can start up and get back to a good known state and maintain a consistent state. There's a transaction controller that handles all of this, mediating transactions across the cluster. So no matter how big or complicated your transaction is, it will make it to all the nodes in the cluster together or not at all. Query layer at base has a broadcaster and an aggregator. The broadcaster is federating queries across the cluster and to multiple threads within this one node in the cluster, and the aggregator is consolidating those partial results into a complete result set. There, you can think of this as map and reduce. On top of these are caches, that we use to store queries we've executed a lot of times, so you don't have to keep running them over and over again, again, for efficiency. And then there's the evaluator layer. We have multiple evaluators in MarkLogic, the two main ones being JavaScript and XQuery. These are complete programming languages. You could build complicated applications in them if you wanted to. They're both equally capable. Uh, it depends on what your developers are more comfortable with or the kinds of data you're working with. JavaScript tends to be better for JSON, XQuery for XML. And then we have specialized evaluators for more specific data formats. Uh, SQL for relational data, Sparkle for semantic data, and XSLT for transformations. Supporting all these evaluators is an extensive library of functions to make them even more capable. The interface to this is HTTP REST endpoints. We have an extensive collection of endpoints to do faceted search, document, create, read, update, delete, administration, and so on. And this is also where you would define your own endpoints for your data services. How does this fit into your overall world? Well, if you're dealing with Java or Node.js clients, we have client APIs that provide access to the same set of services. We can take your endpoint specification and compile them out so that, again, your developers here can access them in an idiomatic way. If you're dealing with other languages or environments, uh, Python or Shell script, 
you just be calling REST HTTP in the normal way for that environment. Stepping back a bit, looking at the bigger picture, this is a distributed database with multiple nodes in the cluster. This is one node. It, each node could be focusing just on the data layer, or just on the query layer and interface, or a mix. This could be deployed on-premise. This could be deployed in the cloud. You could be using one of our cloud services. If you're using our query service, what you have is an elastic pool of nodes focused just on the query layer that scales to your workloads. If you're using our data hub service, you have a full stack application that's dedicated to helping you integrate data and understands all those problems. How to manage the transformations, how to manage provenance and governance, how to manage the mastering and so on. So that's MarkLogic Server and how it fits into your world. Thank you.